we're now going to look at 2001 Part B, which was the next one down there, and the process you're going to help us out here. 2001 Part B, the speed of an airplane in still air is 160 kilometers per hour. What do I write down? Um, C, V, A, W, I said airplane wind. So the airplane is good. The airplane relative to the wind is 500. Oh, what was the speed? Sorry. 160. 160. So the fact that it says in still air, you go back to the revision sheet I gave you, and when it said in still air, you know straight away that that's the velocity relative to the carrier. In still air means the velocity of the body relative to the carrier. That little bit you've just got to learn off. Okay, we explained why it was the velocity of the wind relative to the carrier, or the sorry, the velocity of the body relative to the carrier, but you don't have to understand it each time, you just learn it off. Okay, one or the other. Either learn it off or understand it. V A, velocity of the airplane relative to the wind. Can I make that plane? Velocity yeah, of the plane relative to the wind. Thank you. It flies in a straight line from P to Q and back again. Point Q is due north of point P. Q is due north of point P. Okay. Throughout the journey, there is a wind blowing from the southwest at 32 kilometers per hour. So from the southwest, I'm not terribly sure, because I'm not very good at picturing this in my mind. So from the southwest, carry is southwest, so it's from there. So it's blowing in that direction. I get rid of my axes. That's the velocity of the wind. And it tells me it's 32. Throughout the journey, there is a wind blowing. The time for the whole journey is five hours. Find the distance from P to Q. Okay, so really, uh, in fact, I may not even finish this question. I just want to get the diagram started up. It's going from P to Q. Uh, Ross, you're going to help me out. What can I know about my diagram? Uh, P to Q, the speed to P to Q is the velocity of the airplane. Okay, so this is what it's actually doing after it takes the wind into account, so therefore that is the velocity of what? So that's what it's doing, it's going from P to Q, it's due north, so whatever way the wind is doing, it's going to redirect itself such that it finishes up in that direction. Next problem, I want to complete my triangle, and I've got to bear in mind what direction it heads out at, bearing in mind the velocity of the wind. So, where does it go? Oh, it's west. Why there? Yeah, because the wind is going north. The wind is going to go back in that direction. It's going to finish up there. So I go over here, somewhere along the line. How far? Until you can make the kind of same line. So I can kind of grab that and stick it in there. So that's the velocity of the wind that I'm grabbing and sticking in there. This is VP, and now I put in my information. I know that's 32. VP I know is 160. No, no, no. VPW is 160. Ah, this is what it starts off doing. VPW is 160. And um, that the angle, the specific angle is, oh, it's 45 degrees, and PQ, PQ, and then the other place is 45 degrees. Okay, so once again, you look to find out what do we know about any angles here. So you look up there, and you look up there, and you say, well, I don't know anything about this guy, but I do know it's 45 degrees, so when it hits an axis, that axis there, or that angle in between the north, the vertical, and the wind. 45 degrees. Two pieces of information and two velocities and an included angle, we can find out anything else that we want. In this case, I think, well, we won't worry too much about it, about finishing it off, but if we wanted to find out what VP was, what would we do? If we use cosine, well, then excuse that. Okay, so just call it, just call it out to me. 160 squared. In fact, we just write it down as a cosine. 260 squared um, equals. 32 squared um, plus VP squared. squared plus VP squared um, minus 2 times uh, 32 times VP times the cos of 45. Cos of 45 degrees. Yeah. And you work all of that out and you get an answer for VP as? Um, you got it down, but you have it here. One eight point something. Yeah, eight one eight one. I think it is. Yeah. One eight one. So VP is one eight one. So that's its velocity going out. Now, ultimately, when we finish this off, we're going to have to say we know it's it's looking for the time it takes for the journey. We're looking for the distance. Sorry, we know the time going up and back is five hours. 
we're looking for the total distance. So if we knew the total velocity and we knew the total distance, so what's given, it's given us, we can work out the velocity, it's given us a time. So the time is five hours up and back. So we know the time up and down is five hours. We can work out the velocity up and down, and from that we can work out what the distance is. Okay? So that's what it is going up. Now we want to know what it is going back. Down. So now it's starting at Q, finishing up at P. Once again we put down our information. It's going to start off at the same velocity. VBW is 160. The wind is going to be blowing in the same direction. Is 32. This time it wants to go straight down, so I call that what? BP. BP. The wind is now blowing in that direction, so I want to go from P to Q. The wind is blowing in that direction, so where do I go? To the left or to the right? Um, to your right. To my right. Over here somewhere? Yeah. So. Actually, no, 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 no,